Hello guys, welcome to a map breakdown of Sylvan Cliffs, a map by Subatomic Panda. This map starts with a basic water drop that takes you into your starting area. Here there are a selection of chests with basic resources, as well as a small hut that has um, sort of an array of different resources that can be helpful in different ways. Moving past that, the first area of the map that players should be moving down to is the ravine crossing. Um, at the ravine crossing, um, the main objective for players is to build typically a bridge to get across the ravine. Um, during which though, um, the teams will be firing across at each other trying to hinder any progress on that bridge and any players crossing. Um, players additionally have the option to drop into the ravine. Dropping into the ravine, you find yourself greeted with both first resources as well as first wall. In first resources, we can find um, an array of resources. Mainly, uh, the key ones that players tend to go for are the iron blocks and the gold blocks. But alongside that, there are some brewing supplies as well as an ender pearl and some um, golden tools that can be helpful. Moving past that, we have the entrance to first wall. This is a hybrid wall of both PvP and PvE. So players have to move past the selection of spawners to get to the three different levers and flick them all on to unlock the wall box. So the first lever is found on the bottom layer. The second lever is found on the first layer and the third lever is found on the top layer. These levers can be flicked in any order, um, but in doing so, once all three are on, um, the light turns on here to signify that they're all on and the wall box is unlocked, allowing players to click the wall. Within this wall, with its open sort of layout, it is also very prone to PvP action, um, even more so once teams have completed the wall and deactivated the spawners um, they are then able to set up in such a way that they can really wreak havoc on the enemy team. Within the wall itself there is also cannon supplies so even more fun and games can be um, had when you're trying to block up to keep yourself alive in this wall um, if a TNT cannon comes over to your side and uh, really ruins your day. So moving past that we find ourselves at second resources. So going into here, um, we find additional sort of iron, gold, diamonds, um, as well as some basic potions. So we have swiftness, um, as well as a splash ship swiftness, and a potion of healing, as well as two golden apples. Um, as well as that, on the bottom layer, there is a golden armor set, um, as well as an efficiency five stone pick, and a Golden Sword of Unbreaking 3 and Fire Spec 2. So, this uh, resource area, whilst not made for um, a large amount of people, it can really boost, especially one to maybe two people early on and uh, kickstart your, your game. And uh, it's really helpful if you're trying to um, push a wall early on in the game. Um, moving past that second wall, the entrance of which can be found here. The start of it is a very short and very simple PvE section. Um, once players 
make their way through that, they then get onto the main chunk of the wall, which is the PvP section. This is, to most degrees, uh, a quite a typical PvP wall. Um, so players will have to f sort of uh, worm their way through the, uh, the areas um, and try to get to the wall box. Um, if players are standing in front of lava, you know, it, that is the main um, damage dealer that can really hurt someone even if they're in full diamond. Um, so that, that can be the real um, tide turner if you can get someone into that lava and uh, their hearts can quickly disappear. Moving past that, we have the uh, watchtower. This has a couple of additional iron blocks um, as well as some further resources inside. Um, moving down the cliff, we find uh, more cannon supplies. And then carrying on towards the end of the map, we find ourselves at Third Wall. Third Wall is um, more of a pure PvE wall. Um, it is open, so um, for this first section, you can find yourself coming under PvP pressure. But realistically, the uh, the main brunt of this wall is the uh, fight against the mobs themselves. So on this first layer, the the mobs aren't particularly challenging, and uh, most experienced players will find themselves making quick progress at this point. However, at this point, players will be greeted with the vertical section. This is where things start to kick, kick up a little, and um, players have to make their way up to the top of uh, where the wall box is found, um, whilst negotiating past a selection of different mob spawners. Once all um, three walls have been collected, it's time to take them to the monument. On this map, the monument is found above first wall. There's not too much of a challenge to it. It's fairly easy, uh, easily reachable, and um, any t the team that has all three walls first should typically be the team um, getting to this monument um, the majority of the time, as there's little opportunity to really prevent uh, a monument run, a victory run on this map. So I hope you guys enjoyed this map breakdown, and uh, I'll see you next time.